Karina here, your Lucid Living Coach. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm a transformational healing arts coach, and I am here to give you the full moon in Pisces video. The full moon in Pisces is happening August 30th at 636 p.m. this Wednesday. And if you don't have anything to do and you're in the Bay Area, I'm hosting a paint and sip in Martinez at William Welch Winery. It's probably going to start around 530 or 6. So come on down or hit me up to save your seat and your ticket. So if you just walk in, I might not have enough canvases for you. So yeah, it's a really good wine. And we already have a lot of people coming and I wanted to fill the place because this is a time where we're probably going to be um, pretty awake because it is the biggest full moon of the year. It's called a super moon. This is when the moon is closest to earth during a full moon. And it's also a blue moon, hence the blue hair today. And Pisces is ruled by the ocean and the fish. And then opposite of Pisces is Virgo, the virgin, which is harvest. So we are in harvest season right now. And I thought, what better place to have my paint and sip in than a winery or a wine tasting room for the harvest. And... The blue moon, what makes it a blue moon is we have two, this is the second full moon this month. And usually we have one full moon and one new moon. And once in a blue moon, we'll have two full moons and one new moon, which is August. So... When I pull up the chart, I'm pulling up the chart for Pacific Coast time because I am in the SF Bay Area and I'm using Tropical Placidus. When I do readings, I also look at whole sign and I also take in consider Vedic astrology. So this full moon has an Aquarius rising and the moon is at seven degrees of Pisces and it is opposing the Virgo sun at seven degrees of Virgo. We just had Mars move into the sign of Libra, mm, the 27th or 28th. So yeah, so on Sunday, um, August 27th, Mars moved into its detriment, which is opposite from its home because Mars lives in the house of Aries and it's in the sign or, you know, the sign of Aries and it's in the sign of Libra. So it's far away from home, doesn't feel comfortable here. And, you know, it's actually really nice Mars because, I mean, I have uh, a Mars and, in, in Libra. And it's kind of like, we're really slow to have confrontation. We, um, rather just let things go. We choose our battles wisely. We most like, um, most likely give the other people, uh, the say in certain things. And yeah, so I think we're going to be less combative during this transit while Mars is going through Libra, but you want to be careful of being passive aggressive. So like not dealing with things head on and avoiding the confrontation could be um, in detriment because you could be having more resentment and it coming out in other ways that aren't healthy. So the this moon is in conjunction with Saturn, which is the planet of restriction and karma and diligence and hard work. And 
being conjunct to the moon kind of tells me that it is, it, there is definitely something around our karma that we could be releasing and letting go of. It's also restricting some of the emotions for, from being expressed. So we definitely are feeling things deeply and it's under the surface in which maybe others can't see, but we are feeling very strongly at this time. We're definitely releasing and letting go of this old self. We're shedding of the past. When I was in uh, Bodega camping, I went to the Seafood Art and Wine Fest and I got this beautiful outfit and it reminded me of a butterfly. So I'll show you. And it's... um, it's tie-dye, so it's very Pisces. It has like these butterfly bell bottomy bottoms. And it to me is just a rough it just resembles all the energy that's going on. So it's this Pisces full moon, which is nebulous, it rules the unconscious, the subconscious. It's a water mutable sign. It is the ending. It's the death of things. It's this death and rebirth cycle. It's shedding all of the the old. I've been seeing a lot of transformational insects like butterflies, moths, um, praying mantis, and... I also follow this cute crab, Howie, on Instagram, and he just molted and seeing his process and how painful and it is. So transformation is painful. It's not, it's not a walk in the park. When a female, it goes through her molting or transformation, it's when she is giving birth to a baby, right? And so it could be really painful. She's birthing a new form of herself. And that's what this full moon is all about. It's releasing this old identity, this old ego self, okay? And we are taking on this new identity that we have been working towards, maybe integrating some things into our daily routines or our health habits and we're desiring to be this better version of ourselves so the the moon conjunct saturn like i said we can feel a little distant from our emotions or the expressions of those emotions and we can feel a disconnect from others making us feel rejected or loneliness or vulnerability because We are desiring some inward, right, work because we are in retrograde season right now. Venus is retrograde. Mercury's retrograde. Uranus just went retrograde. Neptune is retrograde. And Saturn's retrograde and Pluto's retrograde. So we have like these six planets and some asteroids retrograde. But those um, move pretty quickly. Uh, It looks like Black Moon Lilith just moved out of the sign of Leo where it's been for a minute now. And it moved into Virgo. So we have the Saturn opposite Virgos too. So Virgos are going through their own limitations through maybe um, partnerships, relationships, or... Um, just the relationship I think that they also have with themselves. So, yeah, this is a time of rest and release. This isn't a time to start anything new. So this is letting go. So doing is Virgo. So we can get things done. We're doing something new in our daily routines, in our health, in our work. And we're letting go of Pisces. So the sun is shining light in Virgo. And 
we are developing and improving ourselves, our skills, our gifts, our health regimens and work routines, and we're growing closer to who we want to be. And the moon is allowing, which is opposite because full moons, the sun and the moon is opposite. The moon in Pisces is allowing this to be as they are, like to ebb and flow, to change, la- allowing ourselves and others and letting go of any old habits, patterns, identity, self, old habits, and finding peace being this new version of ourselves, integrating it. Because it can feel a little weird after a while taking on this new identity. And we really don't know who we are anymore. And sometimes our ego needs some kind of familiarity or an identity to hold on to. Your ego needs to be like, oh, I like coffee or I like donuts or I like to drink. Um, And sometimes if we have identified with being a drinker or um, being, uh, you know, lazy or not working out or something like that, if we've always had that identity and all of a sudden now we're not drinking or we're working out at the gym, it could feel really foreign and we we could feel like we're losing um, our identity or a piece of ourselves. And that is the transformation that is the molting that is the shedding of our old self and our old identity. And we're connecting with this newer version of ourselves and our higher self. So whenever you feel disconnected from your identity, you could always tap into your higher self because your higher self is outside of your personality or your, your 3d physical self. Like my name's Karina, right? And in high school, I liked bagels. So (laughs) that was my identity for a long time. My nickname was Bagel Face. And I'm gluten intolerant now. And I I love bagels still, but I can't eat them. And I don't, I don't eat them. I've, I've had two in the last probably 10 years. So, (laughs) so our, my higher self uh, knows me my soul self, my God self, my intuition, my higher self sends me messages through my intuition as to what I am to do or where I'm to go. Now, we're also connecting with things of Pisces, like intuition and telepathic telepathic, um, connections, empathy, and compassion. We could also be releasing negative emotion or resentments at this time. Healing and giving no power to our triggers. Make sure to remain hopeful and positive and elevated while you're dying to an old self or an uh, old identity. There is a slowdown before there is a speed up. Now is the time that things are slowing down. We're going inward. We're in retrograde season. We are reassessing and reevaluating all these six planets in all the houses and the zodiac signs, what aspects it's making and what houses it's in for us. So you're going to have to go into your chart. If you're not sure where this is, if you never had a birth chart reading, hit me up. That's what I do. My website, you can find my readings at www.lucidlivingmovement.com. And I could do a natal chart reading. And I also do a little bit of all of them, if you're just wondering. And I just pick out everything that stands out to me in the natal. So it's $333. You get a partial natal, progressed, and transits. And anything, and of course, the card reading. And anything around, anything that sticks out that's happening for you right now. And I'm telling you, it's one of the best tools to navigate life. You're, this is our clock. So the clock that y'all wear on your, your watch or your wrist is the 
planets rotating around the earth. Everything has a time and a place. Now, Uranus is also retrograde. Like I said, Venus is actually going direct on Sunday. Mars is en- has entered Libra for this full moon. And, and we are being asked to focus on what we have evolved, what we've changed, and determined we will strive to next. Wait until next year to start anything new because we're in retrograde season. This is the last month of summer before fall, and we're falling back into the arms of the universe for this full moon in Pisces. So we have, like I said, the moon conjunct Saturn, which is con- restriction and karma. And also the moon is our, is, is our emotion, mother, women in our life. So we could also be being restrict from that feminine energy or that mother. The, uh, Other feelings are felt deeply. However, we can feel distant from our emotions or our expressions. We can feel a disconnect from others, and that can make us feel rejected, um, lonely, vulnerable. We could be having fights with our mother or the woman in our life or our partners. We could feel in in odds with women in our life, right? So because the, the, the Saturn is sitting there, with the moon in Pisces, our, our subconscious can affect our reality right now with this conjunction and the full moon in Pisces activating our unconscious subconscious mind. This is a good time to reevaluate our decisions, our mistakes, our actions leading up to this full moon. And we can ask to be redeemed, um, to connect more with our our hopes and our wishes and our dreams and our desires. So this is a reset, okay? So we're resetting our unconscious in a more positive way and sticking to the routines and the habits and the new selves that we have been working on. We should be dialed in to our best life. And that will, I think, be seen after this full moon in Pisces and what it is that we do on a regular basis, because Virgo is our daily routines and our work and Pisces is our intuition and our connection with our dreams. So we have to get good sleep and rest in order to level up in our daily routines, our health and our routines. So the second house is our value. This is a Taurus house. It shows us what our values are and whatever our values are based on is the sixth house, which is the Virgo, the Virgo house of our daily habits, our work and our health regimens. So whatever our values are, we're going to do on the daily in the sixth house. And then the 10th house, this is the earth trine. The 10th house is the outcome of everything that our values are and what we do daily is the outcome, the 10th house of career and legacy. So let me take a little sip. It's me. Augie's very active right now. She's trying to get her favorite ball, her ping pong ball. She's having a hard time getting it. Should I get it for her? Probably. Will I? I don't know. So the moon is Quincunx Mars and the moon is our emotions and Mars is aggression and passion and sex drive. And our fight is not really understanding one another. That can be frustrating. So we may be underneath feeling the intensity, emotional aggression and changing our action patterns and feeling filling out our actions or acting on our intuition and inner knowing. I think for those who have been, let's say, putting up with a particular thing or person or relationship, this is like the clearing and the last of it. Like we're, we're starting to understand our value and we can be quick to move on and let things go. Um, that's Pisces. Thank you, Pisces. And things are in 
flux and change because this is mutable energy. So nothing is really staying the same and nothing is really can be predicted because we can be heading one direction and then we get shifted in a completely different di direction. Um, it's that unexpected stuff that Uranus provides. It is trining. Uranus is trining Mercury and Pluto. So the planet of communication um, and the planet of transformation. So, yeah, things are changing and evolving. We're transforming and evolving, and we're seeing things for what they are. And we're making some really hard decisions at this time. We are knowing our feelings, and we're valuing those feelings, and we're arranging a plan to create more of what we want or have been thinking about. Uranus is trying palace. Um, exact, exact. And so Uranus, the planet of, uh, unexpected changes in the value, our value systems, and it's having a nice trine to palace, which is strategy. And also Mercury's over there with her. So they're really you know, thinking up and looking at like all the details and really looking at the receipts and the past, the past patterns and things are just going to shift. It has a way of to Uranus has a way of like washing things out. So don't hold on to things too tightly, allow things to move freely and let the universe lead you to who you were meant to be now. So palace reveals where you can figure things out with logic and reasoning and creative understanding. And she represents our creative intellect and shows where you have the, the genius qualities. So you're getting a positive boost to, to our mind and the information is coming in. So our intuition is on point to the extent of telepathy. So really listen to our higher selves, listen to our intuition, because things are going to be coming in. Um, Pisces is the connection with all. We are all one. We have to all get on the same page for really making this change happen. The, this full moon is loaded with emotions and feelings. We might have a good cry or a purge. The change and power and staying power. So make sure that you're mindful in your actions. And Venus's retrograde is over on Sunday. So we can start taking action in our our money, our resources, and our relationships that are meaningful. And the ones that have actually stuck around because Venus retrograde has been going on. Let's see. It's been going on since um towards the mid mid end of July. So get all your disagreements and arguments settled. And yeah, Uranus turns retrograde. We talked about that. Jupiter trine Mercury. So there is a lot of optimism and hope. We want to stick with that too. Uranus is trying Pluto. So there's just oh, it's crazy. Just a lot of transformation and a lot of action happening. So I was at the gym today and I just heard this girl like getting so frustrated and I'm looking, I'm like in the mirror and I see her and I was like, Hey, I was like, what's going on? She's like, I cannot find my locker. She's like, I don't remember what locker I've tried plenty of these lockers. And she was just like, what is wrong with today? everything and it was like oh i didn't tell her i was an astrologist and that we have like six planets retrograde and there's this full huge super blue moon and pisces but yeah she came back she was just like so frustrated she's sitting down waiting for the lady to come that works there to open up some of the lockers and another woman on the other side was going back and forth from this side around me to the other side of the lockers. And I was like, Oh, I was like, are you, 
can you not find your locker either? She's like, no, I can't. And the other girl's like, it is so embarrassing. And the other lady's like, no, we all do it. And I was like, yeah, I've done it. I just take a picture of my locker number before I leave, especially in Mercury retrogrades, especially when my mind is tired. And especially if I have a lot on my mind and that lady's like, my, my mind's just been going and going and going and I haven't been in my body. So that's Pisces. You want to get in your body. That's how you balance all this Pisces energy because it's a lot. I mean, this, this is a huge moon and it's so close to earth and it's just, it's just, you know, giving us all this Piscean energy and we have to balance with the Virgo energy. So how you balance Pisces is with getting in your body, grounding, eating grounding foods, you know, eating healthy, being healthy, working out. So, you know, there's one thing that I like to do is, um, I have these little meridian scrubbers on my body and I just rub them here. I also do this thing with my tongue that gets me back out of my head into my body. It kind of sounds like an alien. I just press my tongue against the roof of my mouth and it kind of wakes me up a little bit and gets me in my body. So use whatever techniques that works for you. Uh, grounding essential oils like patchouli or vetiver, uh, cedar, anything that has like earthy type of smells, eating grounding foods like sweet potatoes, french fries, carrots, beets, all those are really grounding foods. And yeah, just doing stretches, working out, you know, moving your body around. It's really, it, it really does help. So I wanted to read the inside degrees and then pick some cards. And yeah, see if anything comes out. So see seven. Okay, so seven degrees it is in step astrology, which is Christopher Wateki's uh, step astrology, is Neptune. So it's it, it's definitely a Pisces Neptunian full moon. And I'm I went out of town this weekend and I went to Bodega Bay and I went to the seafood fest. I love seafood and I, I ate, you know, barbecued oysters and, and shrimp taco and French fries. And I got my grounding. Now I'm back on my raw diet. I just made an amazing, it's like a pasta salad and it's the zucchini noodles. And I threw pesto in there and, garlic and pine nuts and nutritional yeast, some olive oil and tomatoes and avocado mixed it up and ate it. And I am so satisfied and so full. So I'm excited to do another week of this raw diet. I plan on continuing it until I get to feel the way that I want to feel in my body. So I'm excited and I'll keep you guys updated on my Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, you can find me at lucid underscore living underscore coach. All right, let's see here. Pisces, seven degrees, a candle burning. There is a ring of salt around it on the floor. Spirit is well preserved from becoming untrue. It is held within its own matrix and granted a pure and wonderfully veiled atmosphere and feeling tune and sphere to stay within. From this place, spirit can empower itself to be whole, to commune, to remember, and to conceive. You are given what you need and a specially granted timing, grace, to be ushered through the world in a guided tour that leads only to the temples and the marvels that are here. So yeah, everything is happening in divine timing. However, all of this happens inside, deep inside. So manifesting, meditating, we should be meditating and, and really envisioning the future that we desire. The outward situation may be lie the inward experience. But here, what seems in the moment is as nothing. And what is really there between the lines and through the cracks is everything. This is a 
a domain set apart for special purposes, projects, and endeavors. And this is the perfect retreat for one who wishes to remain in touch with the living spirit, who wishes never to forget what it is that stands under the phenomenal world and keeps the internal flame burning without a flicker. So, that was the inside degrees, the Sabian symbol. Very, very interesting. I am going to pick from my new tarot deck. I'm going to first pull some oracle cards from, of course, the mermaids, because this is a Pisces full moon. Of course, Alice in Wonderland, because it has a lot to do with Neptune. And the flowers of fate. So we'll start with the flowers of fate. We got, I got my little candle lit over there. Ooh. Oneness. Well, hello. That is an all, a lie and a sign. So I've been seeing a lot of signs around me. What signs are you seeing? So oneness, that's what Pisces is. You observe the light and the dark of duality as a way to see your creations manifest into the physical. The great light of love is different to the light of duality. It is the merging of all opposites into one. Become clear with this. Otherwise, you will be chasing only light, happy and nice, denying the dark, sad and awful, or vice versa. Opposites exist when we focus on one side. You know what you want when you know what you don't want. Duality exists in this plane to have us ask different questions of life and create physical manifestations from the energy that flows from those questions. This is how you create your life. All is well for the light of oneness will never judge you. It just shines upon you always. And it is us who don't always feel its presence when we are focusing on the false perception of reality. But sit quiet, quietly and close your eyes. Ask your higher self to show you a sign that represents your highest development for this life. However, whatever comes will be the most perfect sign to breathe life into your highest will at this time. Your sign will be a color, a feeling, or inkling, a memory, a guide, or angel, something abstract, or a symbol. Imagine your sign is greatly, gently floating in front of you. Light energy and wisdom shine from your sign and saturate every part of you. All is transformed, giving you full access to your higher will and courage. Be inspired by the newly found part of you. Allow it to reveal your highest developments, your highest path, and makes you the happiest. Open your eyes and continue to flow through your day. Wow, that was crazy. Those are like the two most perfect cards for this full moon in Pisces. All right, next we will do Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland. Let me give it a good, a good shuffle. Ooh, had a good, nice, hard workout at the gym today. And I went shopping for all my food. And I did laundry and unpacked. I'm exhausted. Who in the world are you? Getting to know the new you. What? You cannot. You cannot make this shit up. It's so crazy how spirit just always gives me food. Oh, my God. And I opened right up to it. Like, going on. This is the perfect card. That's what's going on. The perfect. The perfect. When you receive this card, you're being asked to rediscover yourself through the asking of that all-important question, who am I? As Alice so wisely says, that's the great puzzle. So many people go through life being who they think they are. Who's, who others say they are, 
or who they think they ought to be, when who they truly are is submerged beneath conformity, habits, stereotypes, cultural expectations, and other people's opinions. This card is asking you to ask this question and to assume just for a moment that you may not know just who you are. This is your invitation to go beneath the roles and the assumptions, allow your true self to slowly ascend and emerge from beneath the soul, the soultifying feedback of the world and to be once again. When this card comes to you is a wonderful opportunity to live from the heart of yourself once more, to question all you think you are and to find out who you are right now. You may wish to meditate on this question or to find out who you are in new places with new people. Yeah, I am a dreamer and I always imagine myself somewhere, somewhere else. You may like to start over to incarnate in a way. You may wish to travel, undergo some therapy, journal, or have heartfelt conversations about how we become who we are in any given moment. Treat this like a wonderful adventure and an opportunity to forget what you think you know, rather than going along with the beliefs aimed to truly see yourself. Puzzle out, once again, a rebirth into your new self. So, yeah. That's a good one. Another good one. All right. Well, come on, Oracle of Mermaids. Don't let us down. Give us a nice, good message that resonates with this full moon for the collective. Or there's a message that you would like me to share with someone still watching. If you have. Listen this far, if you wouldn't mind giving me a little like and a comment, a little blue heart, and let me know that that you stuck in, and let me know where this is happening for you. Where are seven degrees of Pisces in your chart? Yearning. Longing for someone, undesired, separation, and pinning. Let me see. He's kind of cute. Doo, doo, doo. And she's pretty. She looks sad. Okay, so this is number 40. 40, 40, Okay, so... So often we have yearned for so many people, places, things, experiences that are not to be ours. To be the mermaid is to dive in, to immerse, to swim deeply, and to not understand what it must be to be so indifferent to life. So yes, as we, the little mermaid of of your stories, there have been foolish things done. Exchanges made and pain endured when we have fallen in love with a life or a place that we cannot truly experience in our current form. To be mermaid is to feel without the judgment and logic you so often apply. We are of water born and in water, in the psyche, in emotions, and in love with feeling every aspect of our potential. And sometimes this has brought us pain. And sometimes we know this pinning and longing can kill us and you too, which is why we come to you now. We know that you too are feeling pain, this yearning that is a kind of a stretch of the soul till it feels it might break free from you and go in search of what you desire. But we are here to also tell you that 
the feelings that you're experiencing will pass, that you can't expect a breakthrough, where your capacity to feel and to love and to heal and to adore is growing stronger and stronger. And as you feel this, it is possible that you may wonder about your connection to reality and to what you call sanity. Yearning is deep, is painful, and what takes place when two souls who have deeply merged their energy and their fates and their destinies are separated and do not know when they will be together again. It is natural. Creatures of the sea and the forest do this, and so do you. The pain will pass, and if it is destiny that your yearning will bring you close again, it will be so. We know this feeling. We comfort you, know its beauty, and know it all, um, and or know it not at all. So the deviation for this card is yearning for someone that you may not even have met, yearning and pinning for someone who you love and for the moment are separated from. You may be feeling a great gulf of distance open up between you and someone you love. This may be a physical distance or distance due to belief, lifestyle, yearning for a connection and the closeness that seems to be evading you at the moment a longing for someone that you love to be by your side, not being able to bear another day of separation. So I'm not going to continue reading because it will, it continues on, but we get the point, right? So those are great. I'm going to go ahead and roll the dice and see if there is another message for someone. First house, south node, Leo. All right. So this is someone that knows thyself very well. They know who they are. They know their ego. They know uh, what makes them tick, what makes them talk. And they're looking to move towards being more harmonious within their partnerships and their relationships. Because Aquarius is about the collective and it's about um, helping others or, you know, having a heart and, and compassion for other people more than themselves. That's also seventh house would be that Libra energy, which is about marriage and partnership and relationship. And so this message is for someone that is moving out of being in a place of only thinking about oneself, what one, what, what one wants and desires and kind of being like, look at me and, uh, more being about how can I provide and support someone else to shine and to be appreciated or cared for? Um, yeah. Okay. So let's see what the card should say. Okay. That's one. Two. Ooh, three cups. Okay. Well, oh, there's going to be a celebration of a union. Ten of cups. You're going to have a celebration of m- emotional fulfillment. You're going to have the family and the life that you've always desired. The high priestess, the moon, or this full moon. I think things are going to start being clear. So we have the three of cups. Okay, making new friends and celebrating and having fun and rejoicing. And the Ten of Cups is, you know, that emotional fulfillment. 
having the family or the union or the children or a sense of security and safety and having someone that loves you. And the high priestess is also has to do with taking control of one's emotions and becoming that, that kind of hierarchy in our own lives. So what else is coming out here? Oh, that flipped really fast. The devil card. Okay. So that's okay. 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 So the devil card came out, which is, um, probably having to do with that Saturn because this is, this is, uh, karma, right? So there's some karmic relationships. They're chained together. It's kind of their destiny to be together. Um, in this physical form. And, you know, I think it's just saying that like you're like someone out there has a connection with someone and maybe the karma, the karma is over or this could be like more of someone is out like roaming and searching. Okay. This is the two of wands and looking for something that is <laughs> probably um, not going to work out. So this could even be a physical thing. This could be more of a sexual thing because um, the devil is the flesh. It's the physical. And so maybe someone is looking for this physical thing and the five of cups is saying that you're looking in all the wrong places and there's two cups right there. There's these emotions that are here that you just aren't paying attention to. And you're not like, you're not, you're, you're focusing on the shit that didn't work or doesn't work. And there are so many, so many options. Like when you, when you limit yourself to just focusing on the things that you don't like that's in your life or you're not happy with but you have like all these cups available, like you, you've got to open up these cups that are available and stop looking for the things that, that are just not, it, they're just not in alignment. You know, they don't feel good. You know, maybe, maybe you have ventured off, like you thought the grass was greener on the other side and you've changed and transformed so much that it's just like, you can't go back to the old life. You can't go back to the meaningless sex. You you can't go back to the meaningless um, the job, you know, because maybe you found your purpose and your calling. Now, let's see what else I'm going to pull from uh, my new tarot deck that I got in Joshua Tree. I'm birthday. I'm noble. Oops. Okay, what's this? Wheel of Fortune. Oh, that's a good luck card. Okay. It's also an ending. The Wheel of Fortune, this is an en this is an ending. Look at this girl. She's like doing a back bend. She's like stretching, but she also has this form of like a bridge. She has a bridge. I feel like there is a bridge, an access that's opening up that maybe wasn't there before. But she she she's free. Like her, she's feeling really good in her body. The wheel of fortune is really good luck. Oh, there's another card. Hold on. What's that one? This whole. Okay. Oh, the strength card. Okay. That's the Leo. So this is the Leo card, the strength, and you're having the strength to move forward, to push ahead to do, to be the new you, to really make it happen. And the strength card is also about expression and sticking to that in which you desire. So, and having the courage to ask for what you want. 
having the courage to do something that is uncomfortable or that scares you just to push the evolution. And so when you start making different choices and different decisions, you'll start getting different results. The eight of cups. Yeah, so this card is pretty cool looking. And it says the eight of cups. It's like this long road, right? It's like this guy is walking away. But there is that moon in this card. And so this is about um, abandonment or disappointment or withdraw, um, we're withdrawing. And the strength um, to, to hold on, right? But this was also up, upside down, which is inner strength, self-doubt, low energy. So we want to, you know, really take the time for rest and recuperation because there is some good karma coming through with the Wheel of Fortune here. This is good luck. This is, you know, something turning out in your favor. And I mean, this this is a great reading, in, in my opinion. Um, because we have the three of cups and the 10 of cups. We have the will of fortune. We have the strength card, which is the Leo because Venus has been in Leo retrograde. It's going direct on Sunday. So we have been reconsidering what it is, wherever Venus has been retrograde in your chart, uh, what we deserve and what we want and who we want to become and who and what we want in life and what makes us happy and then you know we have karmic kar karmic um and ego drives that we need to walk away from okay the eight of cups we need to walk away from them we need to stop focusing on the things that aren't working and looking at all the possibilities and all the things and all the emotional abundance that we do have access to and we'll have that emotional fulfillment. So I'm going to pull the last card. It's making magic card. And then you can meditate on the symbol. And then I'm going to bed and do my own little Pisces ritual. Love charm. Attract a lover, soulmate, and life partner. And Felix Felicious. Felicia. I don't know. I'm probably saying that wrong. But power symbol to create lucky serendipitous events. So once we let go of the things that aren't serving us, we make room for the things that are waiting for us just around the corner. So I wish you guys the best full moon in Pisces. I hope to see you at my paint and sip in Martinez on Wednesday at five. It's at 837 Main Street. And if you're interested in the reading or life coaching, I have my coaching packages. I have the one month and the three month coaching package where I work with you and your chart and really like make things happen. And I think that's all. And go ahead and give me a like if you haven't like or comment and share with your friends if you think that this would be of use to them. All right, guys, peace out. You're listening to Coach Karina. <laughs>